Well, here we go again, episode two of the Wickham series, and uh, I haven't yet deleted the save, so it must be going quite well at the moment. But we did start off the season with a win, and, well, I did say that the games are going to be more difficult, and it sort of has been, in a way. But anyway, let's stop faffing about in the intro, and let's get into the video, because there is a lot to talk about, and a lot to share, because, I mean, well, it's, it's gone really well at the moment with Wickham. But I am trying not to get ahead of myself, because it is only episode two, and it can still go downhill from here. Now, in the first episode of the series, Series, we did take on Rotherham United at home in the first game of the championship season and we beat them by two goals to nil which is probably one of the best results we had uh, up to the first game of the season and then the results after that have been they've been pretty good they have been pretty good I, I can't like bullshit you they have been really good now following that game against Rotherham United we took on Blackburn Rovers away from home and despite starting off the game very well initially uh, we succumbed to a 2-0 defeat Adam Armstrong scored the pick of the goals with his 30 yard strike which the keeper should have saved in my opinion but is what it is uh, we followed that game up with a home game against Swansea and despite going 1-0 down in the first half to Gelhart's goal uh, we did turn things around David Wheeler equalized on the stroke of half time to make it 1-1 and then Joe Jacobson scored from the penalty spot to give us all three points in our second home game of the season we followed that game up with a an away trip to Luton Town and despite them having the worst defensive record in the league uh, we lost to them by two goals to nil and then we exacted revenge on Millwall after they knocked us out of the Carabao Cup earlier this season with a 2-0 win against them. Freeman and Patterson both scored headers either side of a Ben Thompson red card. And then we saved our best performance so far this season until last as we managed to blitz past Reading and a first half performance where we scored three goals through Horgan, Jacobson and Ik Piazu even scoring as well uh, gave us a 3-1 win and another three points. I've won four games with Wickham. I said I was even going to win one with this lot. Now one of the most pleasing things I've had so far was it's only taken me three preseason games against crap teams uh, to change the mentality of the squad but I found that we only played 27 long passes against Rotherham in our first game of the season which is really good considering that Wickham's football in League One last season in real life was probably some of the most long ball tactics you've ever seen and the fact that we're playing short passes when we have a target man up front who we should really be playing long balls to makes absolutely zero sense but it's working amazingly as well Ike Piazu's two goals didn't even get him in team of the week but it did get Joe Jacobson in there I mean Joe Jacobson did nothing except keep a clean sheet which I mean to be fair is actually the reason we won the game in all honesty. I'll just let the selection committee do their job. I'll, I'll just do my job here. Before we took on Blackburn as well, the media asked whether I was confident we would avoid relegation. And despite the fact that I've been very derogatory to Wickham, their football, their tactics, their players, and everyone else that's associated with this football club, I definitely think we're going to stay up this year. Also, transfer deadline day was upon us. And despite the fact that I've mentioned many a time that I didn't have any transfer budget or any wage budget to maneuver with, uh, I decided to look at a few players to see whether they could improve the side. But first of all, we did have a now going and Scott Cashcare has left the club uh, to join St. Johnston on loan for the rest of the season. Uh, one of my strikers who was never going to play this season and I might as well send him to a league which my nan can play in. Not like anyone's ever made that joke before. One thing I found very interesting as well is that we're paying a roughly about 61000 a week on our squad's wages and you look at Watford who are top of the table and they're paying about 850 k a week. I mean it's an unfair game isn't it? But let's be real here like I'm not spending that much on wages but I'm punching well above my weight. In before someone says proudly, let's see how you're doing at the halfway stage rather than six games into the season. Some more pleasing news has also come out because after Uche Igpiazu scored his two goals against Rotherham and then that goal against Reading, which gave him three goals this season so far, he managed to get called up to the Uganda squad and he actually played. I mean, I feel like they're just scraping the barrel, really. There must be better strikers out there than Igpiazu. My left winger, Daryl Horgan, also scored his first goal for the Republic of Ireland and I jokingly said to the media that I hope he brings some of those goals back to Wickham. <laughs> God, I am a professional comedian, aren't I? Oh, and then Igpiazu decided to retaliate to my bad comment by uh, injuring one of our other strikers, so he still has to play then. So currently, at the moment, we're about 8th or ninth in the league, and the board are actually quite pleased that we're challenging for the playoffs, but they expect us to get relegated. You know, just keeping their feet on the ground, that's what I respect. Not like me, who said we're going to go up this season. Yeah, but it's not like I've... Oh, hold on. Hello? Yeah, I still want to keep the open bus tour. Yeah, yeah, May time, May time, yeah. Yeah, could you get on the front, Wickham Wanderers Championship Winners 2020-2021? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, sorry, where was I? 
I'm also pleased to announce that we have signed a new left winger who is probably going to replace Fred Onyedima when he decides to move on. Uh, so Zach Clough joins us from Nottingham Forest uh, for 27,500. I know it's an amazing deal really to get a player who was very highly rated five years ago and then has done nothing ever since. Uh, and uh, he's lucky to be in the championship still. And you might also be thinking, but Proudy, he would be on a lot of wages surely being in the championship and everything. And yeah, that is true. But I got Nottingham Forest to pay five grand a week of his wages and all I'm Campaign is a grand economic masterclass by Christopher Proud once again. But now we move into our game against Norwich away from home. And have I picked this game on purpose because the last attempt is not to get sat to us with Norwich? I prefer not to speak, otherwise, I'll be in trouble. But we do adopt the same system and same formation that I played against Reading, which got us a 3 1 win. And as you can see on the table and to the right, we are currently just outside the playoffs. And Norwich, I think, are just below us in the league. So a win here could take us into the top six. But as you can see, we have now adopted the 4 5 1 formation. So Ryan Allsop keeps his place in goal. Joe Jacobson. Anthony Stewart, Josh Knight and Jack Grimmer play in the back four. Alex Patterson, Dominic Gape and Curtis Thompson play ahead of them in the midfield three. While Daryl Horgan, David Wheeler and Uche Ikpiazu lead the line for us. And you're probably looking at that team and thinking, Proudy, how did you win 3-1 away at Reading with that side? I mean, I'm still questioning that as well. Now, I wanted to say this is going to be our first proper test of the season. But I mean, if you look at the fixtures before that... Quite a few of those games were actually proper tests as well. So I can't really say that about Norwich. But Norwich have just come down from the Premier League and they have kept a lot of their players that they had in the Premier League. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But I don't know why I'm worrying because I've managed Norwich before. They're not that good. Like clearly not that good. I mean, we could easily get anything from Carra Road. You know, when I say anything, I mean like goals, clean sheets, stuff like that. You know, a clean sheet, which we couldn't hold on to for more than six minutes as Kieran Dow put them in the lead. I mean, it's the first highlight of the game and it's already gone in. Oh, strap yourselves in, boys. This might be a long game and you know what i've been telling the boys in training all week to you know tackle and all they're doing is just standing there staring at the ball and seeing it going to the back of the net cheers boys we're only 15 or so minutes into the game before we started just giving norris chances for fun and emmy Buendia, who was one of my best players last season uh, managed to force ryan also into a fairly decent save couldn't do that for me last season, could he? But it took us 18 minutes and we fashioned our first chance of the game as David Wheeler and Igpiazu linked up well to set up Alex Patterson, but he just fired the ball wide. I mean, what a waste of a chance that was. I'm not going to see the ball again for another 40 minutes. Cheers, mate. Ryan Allsop was the busier of the two goalkeepers and then was made to make a save from Todd Cantwell as he cut in from the wing and fired out a goal. I mean, pretty poor shot. That is why Todd Cantwell wasn't very good for me last year either. I mean, I feel like I hold a grudge against this side for no reason other than the fact that they're shit and they made me lose my job. Well, actually, no, sorry. You didn't know if that actually happened or not, so we'll never know. Ryan also was then forced into action again as he made this great save from Kieran Dow and took the ball over to the bar for a corner. But then from the resulting corner, Emmy Wendia played it into the box and Kieran Dow then made it 2-0. <sighs> It's just, it's just not worth it, is it? It's just not worth it, this game. And just when I thought it can't get any worse, Mitchell then played the ball into the box of Timu Puki to fire it past my keeper. 3-0. It's, it's not even half time yet. We're 3-0 down. I haven't been 3-0 down all season. Like, genuinely, it's taken us seven games to concede three goals in a game, and yet I've done that in one half as well. And just to rub salt in the wounds as well, Todd Cantwell thought it'd be fancy enough to do a Rabona cross. It's 3-0! The game's not even over yet. I mean, let's face it, the game is over. Let me just clutch at these straws a little bit longer. Half time came about, and yeah, we were 3 0 down. Um, not really sure anything more negative I could say about that performance, really. Other than the fact that we were shit. And after throwing the water bottle at the wall for the first time this season, uh, my team actually improved in the second half. Daryl Horgan decided to take it upon himself to try and become the new Messi, and he managed to beat two defenders but forced a good save from Bree Sambo. And then a couple of minutes later, he ran at the Norwich defence again and found some space into the box but fired it over. Over. I mean, he didn't really do much wrong there other than the fact that he fired it over the bar and didn't get on target and didn't really trouble the keeper and was also giving away a goal kick. But other than that, he did quite well there. With 20 minutes left on the clock, I decided to admit the feat and send on Adebayo Akinfemo on for Uche Piazu. If you wanted to know the reasoning behind that, I literally cannot even come up with one. And the substitution made the effect I wanted it to have as we gave Norwich more chances to score and Onel Hernandez had his shot blocked. And we managed to see it out the second half and not managed to lose it, which is positives and it's the only positive I could take from this game. It was an absolute disgrace. And to be honest, you know, it's a difficult game, you know, coming up against a team that were relegated from the Premier League last season. I didn't want to go too hard on the team, but my assistant manager decided to take the piss and tell me that I should say that we are pleased with the result. We just lost 3-0 to Norwich away from home and we got battered in the first half. What am I meant to say we're pleased about? Oh, no, I'm really pleased with you, boys. You managed to only lose 3-0 this week. I mean, what morons had they hired in the backroom staff? Please tell me. Well, looks like I'm going to have to bring in the new assistant manager then and let's see what shit assistant manager I bring in next episode.